Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I am your host this evening, and I am joined by the queen of canvas knowledge, Heather Goldstein. Hi. My title keeps changing. It's, it is. It's a never-changing thing. Mm -hmm. um, but your official actual title for the, the Jerry's family here is? Product development. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the fancy new products that you see at Jerry's Art Aroma. Ta-da! Yay! But... Today, we have a very fun show planned for you guys. Uh, it's one that we've been working on getting to since the beginning of the year. Yes. Um, it's, we've been compounding knowledge about all different types of canvas, right. stretcher bars, surfaces, all the things. Uh, Here's so, the accumulation. Yes. Canvas palooza. <laughs> so uh, today, we are going to actually be stretching our own canvases. And before we officially jump into that, quick reminder, our self-portrait contest is still happening, so make sure if you are going to, you know, do that, go get painting, and uh, the links will be in the chats for you guys to check that out. Um, also, today's class code, before I forget that one, is JL229. So if you want to check out anything that we are using, uh, just in case we also grab other things and add it in, we'll make sure that everything is in the teacher's cart, and if you want to go check that out, Go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in the search bar at the top, today's class code, which is JL229, and everything will pop up so you guys can easily check it out that way. So, let's get started, because we have some stretching to do. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, uh, Heather, take it away, because you are the, the, the queen of this. <laughs> All right, so we are going to show you two different ways of stretching canvas. Uh, the first one that I have over here is with a pre-primed linen, and then Emmy is going to start on an unprimed linen. So the pre-primed has a few less steps than the pr unprimed, yes. uh, but we're going to go through all of that for you. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. Yeah. But I will say, uh, stretching wise, it's easier like physically to stretch raw like cotton or linen mm -hmm. than it is a primed but you need a little extra oomph but we'll go through all that right. um but the first step is to put together your stretcher bars which we have already done for you guys um and we did that with using a rubber mallet uh but you do want to make sure that they are squared before you actually cover this in canvas and just a quick reminder on how to check and know that it's square couple options. One is using some uh, right angle. So we have the masonite corners here mm -hmm. uh, and that you can check your right angles. And then the other option that I, I usually do is to measure the diagonals. You want to make sure that they are the same measurement. And that is from corner to corner opposites, right? And while I'm doing that uh, and just double checking mine, do you want to show that one more time? Because I just want to make sure that they saw that. Yeah. So you'll just line it up. Make sure you have a nice right angle before you get stretching. And mine is just shy of 17 inches on both sides. So I am perfectly square on mine. So we are ready to go. Also, if you aren't perfectly square, then just take your rubber mallet and just kind of tap the corners until you get those perfectly square corners. Um, I'm not going to do that because you're poor ears. <laughs> so step one, both of us are going to do, and that is to sta staple your canvas uh, to the center of each bar. I guess before I say that, I should note, when you are um, measuring your canvas, you want to have at least four inches on each side so that you have plenty of canvas to stretch around the bars. Yeah. Now, uh, for you guys just out there watching, I'm actually working with a little bit over five inches on mine. And Heather, however, had a set. Yeah, I had, I had some samples that I was pulling this from, so I think on this side. This side is a little bit bigger. This yeah, is about so, four inches. Yeah. This side, however, is about three inches. So whatever you do, um, I, I mean, we said, what, four inches is about yeah. the standard. But if you have a really deep, you know, if your stretcher bars are like two inches thick, you're you going to need to accommodate for that. Yeah. Obviously. You get a little bit extra oomph. Oh, also should probably note 
Um, which side do you want to staple it to? Oh, yes. <laughs> so you'll lay your, it's easier with the unprimed, um, but for primed, you want to lay your prime side down. And on then, a clean surface. On a very, yes, clean surface. I just changed the tablecloth. This is brand new and nice and clean. So a clean, a flat, stable surface. Yes. So like nothing that's going to have, nothing like a carpet or something like yeah. that. Some Anything with the A end. table is what you're definitely going to look for. Right. Or like a board. Something sturdy. Yeah. Um, and then you will put the side of the bars with the lip face down on the back little. of the canvas. All right, so we want the flat side on the top. Right. All right, we're ready to start stapling. Okay. So I'm gonna use the heavy duty staple gun because the primed linen is a little bit thicker. And I'll be using the light duty because this is, uh, I mean, it's, it's relatively, I don't want to say this is thin linen, but it's not as beefy. Like it's it's a nice substantial material, but it's not going to take a whole lot of uh, stapling to get this to really be secured on there. But of course, you can use yeah. Heavy if you duty. have the heavy duty, uh, and this is at home in my st uh, studio, I have the heavy duty, and I use it on everything. <laughs> yeah. But there are occasionally times where I'm like, man, I wish I had the light duty because it's just a little easier on your hands. Yeah. Um. So let's let's get to stapling. was gonna happen. This is also why we have the rubber mallet. Uh, and this is just something that you guys are going to need to, sorry, no, <laughs> uh, be aware of. When you do staple, try to push down with your uh, staple gun as much as possible because that pressure is going to help your staples really get in there. Yeah. Um, if you don't, it's going to stick up a little bit and you can use your mallet to just tap it in. Uh, but if if it's a little too much, like, I'm sorry, I'm going to use Heather as the example of Yay. what you don't want to do. Uh, right there, where it, you hammer it in and it starts getting squashed and it doesn't go in very nicely. You can either beat that with a hammer and put in another staple, or you can actually pull it out with pliers or a flathead right. screwdriver or whatever it may be. Right. So, Emmy, because she's using... Uh, the unprimed, she can actually stretch that whole thing by hand. However, with a prime linen, it's a little bit tougher. You want to, you're not going to have um, the same opportunity to re to tighten the linen mm -hmm. when you're priming it. So you really want to make sure that you get it nice and tight when you're stretching it. So I have some canvas pliers here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to clamp. Um, I did that first side just by hand. So now pulling from the opposite direction, I'm just gonna clamp the edge, pull it nice and tight, wrap it over, and then I'll hold that there while I get my staple in. I'm gonna just put this over here. <laughs> now for me, um, I'm just going to grab the linen with my hand um, and because I have this is why I have so much excess because it gives me a lot to grab and then I put the palm of my hand up against my frame and then pull it nice and tight and then wrap it around and do exactly what Heather did and then staple it here right in the center. Now we wouldn't then go and continue along these same edges. What you want to do is rotate it and get all four of your sides started. And then also, while you're doing that, pulling it, uh, and when you do the third side, you don't wanna pull it like crazy. You just need to keep it pretty tight and wrap it around, For especially for me. You wanna get it a little bit, little bit tighter. You wanna get it tighter, but you wanna make sure that it's gonna stay even, which is why we're doing this back and forth as we're, as we're stretching, yes. Now, also, just to note, uh, before I forget, um, the linen that I'm using uh, came in a blanket. So that means this blanket was folded. Um, and if you actually can see here, there's a little bit of um, creases in it. It's not a huge deal, but I did iron this with a, just a standard iron. I put it on the linen or cotton setting because it is an organic you know, material. You don't want crazy high heat. Um, but I did iron this. Now, this is okay to iron 
that is not right because <laughs> because of that primer you don't want to actually apply heat to that that can cause problems and for the most part they come in rolls and you don't have those same creases but like if you are working with a blanket and those I guess wrinkles or whatever is starting to give you problems you can just hit it with a little bit of an iron it's, it's this side really <laughs> it's okay our other examples are very pretty yeah but for for time's sake. Yeah, for the purposes of time, we're not gonna worry about getting those staples perfectly in. If you are having uh, trouble with that, and the, honestly, the problem might be because our table is a little higher and it's harder to get that um, that right kind of yeah. pressure down on it. If you're, if you're having this problem, try and put it on a table that's a little bit lower to where you can put your kind of body weight into it um, when you're pushing down on the stapler yeah. or the staple gun, so. So the next step, once you have uh, the center of all four sides stapled in, mm -hmm. you are going to prep uh, for before you do your corners. Yes. So again, you're gonna work in opposites. So I'm gonna just start off on this side. I'm gonna start on the right, and I'm just going, I'm not gonna staple all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna start adding a few staples. So I'll add maybe two staples over here. Yep, and, and I'm then, gonna do the same thing. And then we're gonna flip the canvas around and do it on the Catty diagonal. Corner. Yeah, so you wouldn't wanna do two staples over here and then two staples over here. It would You would wanna continue to keep it, um, again, almost like you're I said this before, like when you uh, put uh, change out a tire, you want to make sure you rotate like in a star kind of a thing. It's the same kind of concept. This is going to stretch your canvas from the center and keep it all the way nice and tight until you get to those corners. It's because we're live. It yep. knew <laughs> it's going to give you some problems because we're live. Yeah. Also, side note, canvas pliers, really great to pull out those staples that are giving you troubles. <laughs> they Convenient. work great. So we would continue um, doing, oops, doing two here and then two over here. Mm -hmm. But just for time's sake, uh, we're going to go ahead and start showing you how to pre-fold your corners. Yes. Now, you wouldn't want to get all the way, I wouldn't go further past these two staples and then like maybe two on this side as well. I mean on this size. Yeah. The larger you get, the more. You can get closer to the, yeah. the edge. But when, especially because we're working with a 12 by 12 canvas, mm -hmm. the closer you get to those corners, the harder it is to pre-fold those corners for right. you. Um, and actually, let's, uh, let me do a corner fold so you guys can see it, hopefully. There we go. Okay, so I got a lot of extra, and this was asked uh, at a previous show, would I cut this off? And Heather and I are both of the same mindset that no, we don't want to cut this extra off. The reason why is because if you ever need to take this uh, painting off of your stretcher bars, roll it up, and then ship it off to another uh, state or someone who purchases it, purchases it or a or gallery or yeah. anything um, you want to have as much of this as possible and once you cut it it's gone um, so as you can see I have my staples here but they stop a good portion like here's my last staple and it's it's a good maybe two and a half inches away from that edge the reason why is because I'm going to try and get this corner folded to where the closer I get to that, the more it's going to be secure. So I'm going to, hopefully you guys can see this well, I'm going to tuck that corner in just like that, right? So you can start seeing that right there. You get this kind of angled at the right spot. So that right there, I'm going to start tucking that in and using my thumb to push out um, along that edge. The reason why is because when I want that corner folded, that's what I'm looking for, right? But we still have all this extra here. 
So I want to make sure first step is to get that edge lined up right on that corner of that uh, where the two stretcher bars come together, right? Then I'm going to adjust all of this, right? I'm going to push this in and kind of just, you just got to finagle it a little bit, you know? And you can even pull this down and do that, right? So your goal really is to have that nice clean edge mm -hmm. on the and corner and you're going this to this needs to line up right you're with going this. to be uh messing around with this inner fabric mm -hmm. to get that flush with the edge of the stretcher bar yes so the part that you're the most concerned with is the part that's visual so the part they can see so you mm -hmm. want to make sure that this um back piece isn't coming out of the back so they can't see it when it's hanging on the wall. You yeah. want to make sure your corners are clean and then mm -hmm. you're going to want to make sure that this area over here um, on that side is nice and tight and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it looks, you, you want it to be real pretty. Yes. Now I did this kind of on purpose because I wanted to show you if you end up getting this nice and folded and then you just have a little extra that's hanging off over that edge. You don't want to staple it down that way. You want to then open up this and push on that crease. The more you push on it, the more it's going to pull that fold in. And I'm actually going to use my whole hand to kind of push it in. But as long as I have it nice and tight, the edge of this is not going to shift on me, but the edge of this extra is going to which is how I adjust that to be nice and tight, just like that. And then while you have it nice and tight like that, you're gonna wanna staple this. Right, so we can actually pull out the, we prepared, ha ha. Uh, the next portion <laughs> of it, magically all of that is stapled. Ta-da! So now we have uh, three sides or three corners stapled. We mm -hmm. have our fourth, um, it's pre-folded. Our fourth corner is pre-folded. And what that's going to do is make it very easy to finish this off. Yep. So for me, I'm going to put a couple of, actually, this is a thinner canvas. Can I take that one? Yes. Now, uh, just so you guys also know, because we forgot to mention this before, I'm using the New York Central... J linen. J linen, because there is L and M and Y, I believe, mm -hmm. as well. This is the J. Uh, it's the same thing on the one that I had been uh, previously doing, so I, I'm using the same one on mine. Um, Heather is actually, she started off with the Diego mm -hmm. linen, yeah. our, uh, and it's universal primed. Mm -hmm. This one is oil primed, which is why it's a little bit more cream color, mm -hmm. and that's the Artfix 84C. And that's the one that was um, really delicate. Very delicate. <laughs> Very so delicate. So that one is, if you have any like little wrinkles or anything on your table that you put it onto, it's going to show up. Yeah. And so um, that's the, the real finicky one. So we wanted to make sure we finished that off and show you guys what it looks like at the Absolutely end. Absolutely beautiful surface. Just you have to be very aware of, yes. of your environment. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off mostly that side. And then I'm to going finish. to Keep mine. pull this portion, that top portion up on the corner piece. Just get one staple in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and staple this side where that flap is coming over to make sure that that stays in place because that's very important. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep, are we out of staples? We might be out of staples. <laughs> I will load, some... actually they're over there. Oh, sorry. Yes, we are out of staples. This is why I brought the staples just in Yay. case. I was, I was curious if we were gonna run out. But then you just keep on going with what you need to get that nice and secure and keeping your um, your edges nice and tight. So you can see here on these other ones, like there's one, two, three, 
four staples right here, but then five staples over here. It's, yeah. it's just whatever. Essentially, anywhere there's like a little bit of a flap, you really wanna staple it down. Unless it's more towards the inner portion of it. That's not a huge, big, you know, crazy deal. Um, but you really just wanna make sure First and foremost, those edges are your number one priority because they are going to be visible. And then you want to make sure that the rest of the excess is secured down. So I'm going to do the same thing on this. And actually, there we go. This is being a nice stapler today. Sometimes they just get a little sassy. <laughs> all right, so and I actually do have, sorry. Now we're good, all stapled. <laughs> all right, so now nice we're all and stapled, and for mine, uh, the pre-primed version, I'm good. I'm ready to paint. Look at that surface. Yeah, nice and tight, because that's what you're looking for. Um, if you the raw linen can be a little bit more looser, mm -hmm. um, but when you're stretching that pre-primed, that that pop is what you're looking for. Yeah. And, oh, I'm taking this one home with me. Yep, I knew you were <laughs> going to. Heather is a, definitely an oil painter, and I tell you what, I knew as soon as we finished that, you were like, this is mine. <laughs> um, but oh. this, for the raw, we're not done. Yep, now, now the fun begins. Yes. So, you have, I guess I'll start with your first and easiest option is going to be to use an acrylic gesso. Uh, acrylic gesso, you, and actually, sorry, before we, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. um, before we get too far, is that for linen and cotton? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, easiest thing you can use is an acrylic gesso. You can put that straight onto uh, the linen or canvas. Sorry, I had a gesso down here. I was going to show you guys. <laughs> uh, you can just paint that straight on and wait for it to dry, sand between layers, do as many coats as you want. Mm -hmm. Oil priming is a little bit more involved, so I figured that's the one that we can do. So if you're going to oil prime, you absolutely have to size your canvas. I The traditional sizing is rabbit skin glue. Um, rabbit skin glue is from rabbit. Uh, it's also, you know, you need a double boiler, you need very good ventilation, um, and it has a smell. Yes, and it is a does. natural organic product, so if it, um, if you transport your painting in, and it's like in extreme heat or like really tropical weather. It, Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it could uh, re-wet and can cause mold. I mean, this is very rare. Yeah. Um, but, but it is but an just organic so you know, product. Yeah. That is a possibility. Mm -hmm. However, Gamblin makes something called PVA size, mm -hmm. and this stuff. So it's a synthetic sizing. This is what I I use personally. Me too. And I like it. It's very easy. Straight yes. out of the bottle. You don't have to do anything with it. Yes, so my face. What we have here, what he ha we have here is just a little, little flower palette. <laughs> just something to pour it into. And um, you are going to use quite a lot on here. Um, so don't be stingy with your PVA sizing. Right. Um, and also, just to kind of show you guys options for brushes, mm -hmm. um, these are just a couple different brushes that we had uh, that we wanted to grab and show you. Uh, this is the Berlin Mottler. This is the Creative Mark Primer Bristle brush. Mm -hmm. That was hard to say. I'm sorry. Uh, and then we have the um, Bond, right? Yeah, the Bond Mottlers. Bond Mottlers. That's the one I'm going to use. I, I really like these. Yeah, um, quite nice. So uh, with when you are sizing your linen or canvas, you are going to paint it on in very thin layers. You want to make sure that it doesn't pool anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then as you're doing this, uh, realize that the purpose of this is to coat each individual fiber. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that you are getting 
getting that that sizing into the weave. Because you want to like really encapsulate it. Now, I wouldn't suggest going to the primer from the backside either. This, if you scrub at it like that, that should be enough to really get it to go through the weave and around to the backside. Um, yeah, it's it's a good scrubbing is the key here. <laughs> and you would put that over the whole surface. You also want to make sure that you're doing your edges as well. So this is the part I always forget. Yeah. Ooh, oops. Tiny tornado. Yeah. <laughs> you love me. I do. This is why I have um, rags on hand. <laughs> Gotta heather proof the station. <laughs> we have uh, Soho wipes and easy wipers on hand just in case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you would continue to do that, let it dry, and you can see where you've stopped. Mm -hmm. um, now, as this dries, mm -hmm. it's going to tighten everything up. Mm -hmm. So remember how I said that loosey goosiness is totally fine with the raw? This is why, because as you get that sizing on there, it's gonna really just tighten it up like it's been working out. Yep, it's been doing abs. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But for time purposes and for the fact that we are on a show, uh, I don't wanna have to sit there and prime the whole thing, but we magically already have one ready. Hey, look at that. And actually, here, I will show uh, this is raw, this is wet, this is dry. Yay. And you can see the difference in color, uh, which is also, fun fact, in my studio, the only way I can tell if I've already sized something, because sometimes I forget where I was at. <laughs> nice. Yes. So once your sizing is dried, mm -hmm. uh, that is when you can start with your oil primer. Yep. So we're going to And this is nice and tight now. We're gonna be using uh, Gamblin's oil ground, which is a titanium oil ground. Mm -hmm. And actually, I asked you this earlier, and I wanted to make sure, uh, or not earlier on the show, but earlier when it was just us. Mm -hmm. um, Sizing-wise, you don't have to size for the acrylic gesso, but you can. You can. You don't have to. You don't have to. But for oil, you absolutely have to. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to yes. reiterate that. Otherwise, the this is how you're protecting the linen from mm -hmm. the oil. Yes. So we have the, the Gamblin oil primer. It's very thick. You can paint it straight on. I added a little bit of Gamsol just to make it a little bit more liquidy, personal mm -hmm. preference. Um, I'm going to use the... Uh, I'm going to show you with the spatcher, the Creative Mark spatcher, which is a silicone tip, and also with the Bond Mottler. Um, and I'm just going to scoop this out. And it looks like you're icing a cake. Yeah. <laughs> which now makes me one cake. Who's Ooh. with me? Yes. <laughs> Same. That is fantastic. Yeah. So nice, even coating, like you're icing a cake. Mm -hmm. uh, Professional cake, not the ones for like me if I just want to make cake for myself at home and I'm just, I slap it on. But we want to make it nice and even. Yes. <laughs> uh, now also, just as a quick little reminder, um, with the teacher cart that we had put together for the show, we did also add in a couple extra options that we're not physically showing you on the show. Um, and I actually wrote it down so I don't forget any. Um, we do have Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso, which is a universal primer gesso. Um, that is, it's a little bit thicker, kind of like um, the oil primer here. And I believe that one- I love that stuff. Yeah, that one is actually meant to be kind of thinned down a little bit. Yeah, but that just means you get so much more out of it. Yeah, and I mean- Which is awesome. It's a huge bucket of gesso for a very reasonable price. Uh, but then there's also, uh, if you want something that will show the beautiful linen that you have and you want to prime it for like a universal primer, uh, Liquitex makes a clear gesso. I mean, there's a lot of different brands out there. Um, the Liquitex clear is one of my personal favorites. I love it and I use it a lot. Um, that and they also make... Um Black and gray, I think. That's, you know. <laughs> Sorry. It hit me. I saw her sleeve going into that, and I was like immediately like, lift the sleeve. <laughs> um, 
Now the other one that we have is also the Frederick's glue sizing, which is like we were mentioning earlier. Um, the PVA size is our personal preference just because it's, it's synthetic. It's you know very easy to use. You don't have to do anything. The Frederick's uh, glue sizing is, is that a rabbit skin glue? Yeah. Or is it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. That one is a rabbit skin glue. So that is in the teacher's cart as well. And then the last one we have is the Williamsburg lead oil ground. Um, that one is very similar to this, but lead. Lead. Um, so I'm actually having done both of them side by side. I'm going to say for stretch canvas, I actually do prefer the Bond Mottler. Okay. Um, but both of them work. Great. Yeah, the spatcher or the bond modeler. So you are going to want to make sure you have a nice even coat and you also do your edges. Mm -hmm. um, you'll wait for that layer to dry and before you put your second layer on. You can sand between coats, but safety first. And yes. especially if you are using a lead primer. Yes. Um, you want to make sure that you are doing it in a very well ventilated area, that you are using a respirator, not a dust mask. Yeah, uh, dust it, mask is not even effective enough for, just, I mean, again, it's lead. You do not want to mess around with that. Right. And please take care of yourself and make sure that, you know, even though we're doing amazing things with art supplies, um, lead primer is still really, really beautiful and it's still a wonderful product. You just need to make sure that as long as you're taking those safety precautions, yeah. you're fine. But please do take those safety precautions. Yeah. Now, I- Wear some gloves. Yeah, as well. All that good stuff. Now, I do know we had a question. I saw- Yeah, you were talking about all the different colored gessos you could get, but can mm -hmm. you tint your own? You absolutely can. You can tint uh, like a universal a primer mm -hmm. acrylic gesso. Mm -hmm. uh, you can- tint with an acrylic. Um, I like to use a very fluid acrylic to tint my gessos mm -hmm. just because then it's not, I don't have to put a ton in there to get a good like color. Also keep in mind if you are tinting regular white gesso, it is mixing your color with white. You're gonna end up with pastels. Right, so, and <laughs> which is which is beautiful. Yeah. Totally a great option. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wanna get that pure color that you are using to mix with, you, I, you know, recommend the clear, the clear gesso. Yeah, which is definitely. If you're gluing a board, are gluing this to a board to make a panel, does the mm -hmm. priming need to be done beforehand? Or do you do it after you glue it to the panel? Uh, you can do it after you glue it to the panel. Okay. I would think so. Yeah. And then, would you use an oil ground on top of a gesso surface on wood or on canvas? You can. Depends on yeah. what gesso you use. Yeah, you can. I mean, so they're talking about doing an oil ground on top of a canvas that's already gessoed? He said, he's, would you use an oil ground on top of a gesso surface? Okay. That's far thin. Yeah. On wood or canvas. I was going to say, because at that point you yeah. really, you can, because mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's protected. Yeah. Yeah. But you technically don't need to. Yeah, you can. You can, I'll, you can paint oils on top of it. Right, without it, doing an oil ground. It will be a little bit more absorbent because yes. it's an acrylic. Yes, so if that you do want thing. the oil primer, then yes. Yeah, and that is the, the biggest difference, especially from one to the other. Universal primer or gesso, acrylic gesso, that's synonym, synonymous terms. I can say words. <laughs> All of those are great for acrylics, oils, mm -hmm. if you want to use gouache on it. Um, they're fine. Oil primer is specifically for oils and it is much less absorbent than in acrylic gesso. So whenever you do that initial layer, you're gonna really notice a difference. Also, if you paint in oils and you like the raw linen, uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that, you can still paint on it after, you can paint in oils after you have sized it. Because mm -hmm. then it's protected. So that's, that's a nice little so you, option too. PVA sizing, and you don't technically have to use the oil ground. You can just go straight in with the paint, which is awesome. Yeah. And do we have any other questions? I have one. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to need more clarification, but they okay. wanted to know, can gesso be thinned with water or Gamsol? 
Water. Water. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Gesso, like, if you're talking about a universal like acrylic, acrylic gesso, gesso, it's still a water-based medium, mm -hmm. so you want to thin it with water. Um, usually speaking, like, because the Jerry's World's Greatest Gesso is very thick, mm -hmm. um, and that one, you would recommend just thinning it with water? Yeah. You thin that with water. I personally like to get that to the consistency of sour cream. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a perfect example. That's is. the way my teacher taught me. So that, mm -hmm. I mean, people have seen sour cream, so. <laughs> it, it also looks like sour cream. Do not eat your art supplies. Yes, yeah, don't eat your art supplies. Even the, if it looks like a cake. Mm -hmm. I seriously want cake now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as far as the oil primer, that's where the, um, you said Gamsol? Because it's solvent, mm -hmm. that's where it would be appropriate. Because um, that's we actually did add just a little bit of terpenoid because it's still very very thick. Yeah. And again, you want the consistency. Um, I think that's really like sour cream now too. Yeah. That's what I go for. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think did we cover everything? I think we did. I think we did. Uh, if you do have more questions, make sure to pop them in the chat below. Oh. Um, yes. When you were. I've, had this one and I forgot. Um, right. You guys stretched relatively small canvases today. Mm -hmm. How would your technique change if you were stretching bigger than you, like 60 by 72? Right, so let me pull. Heather is the queen of stretching ridiculously large canvases. Well, there is a video somewhere on the there web is. of me. There is a video From that we like do 10 have. years ago. Yeah, where uh. she stretches, how big was that canvas? It was, it was relatively big. It was at least six feet on one side. I don't remember. Like it was five it was by huge. seven feet. Six Bigger than six. her. Yeah, it was big. Um, so what you're going to do for a, for a larger canvas as, so we did a couple staples here, a couple staples here. We would then do this side and this side. You're basically just going to continue that along flipping your canvas, doing this back and forth until you get to this amount so that you yeah. can fold it. About three inches away from your corner. Right. And would you say two to three staples every time you do a side and then rotate it? I, yeah, I usually do three staples, larger canvases, so smaller stuff, two staples, um, about an inch to two inches apart. Yep. And trying to keep the staples in a nice straight line. Mm -hmm. I even, on occasion, I, instead of putting my staples straight, I usually yeah, kind of rotate mine a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause just that, that's a little bit, uh, especially with a larger bar, it's a little bit better on your stretcher bar just because you are shoving a piece of metal into wood. And if you continue to put two holes into that same kind of line, you have a higher tendency yeah. to crack the wood just because that's the nature of wood. It, it doesn't have anything to do with the brand of stretcher bar. Yeah. Um, that's just yeah. how wood works, which is why you pre-drill whenever you're doing carpentry. Um, so if you do rotate it at a slight angle instead of having that straight on, mm -hmm. you have a little bit less of a chance to do that. I'm so glad that yep. came up because I totally forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and again, once you get about three, four inches away yeah. from your, your uh, corners, fold your corners in. Um, and also uh, another thing to kind of note uh, is whenever, and this has that PVA on the top, so I'm probably going to try and not get that on my hands. Whenever you're folding your uh, canvas, you see that we had the fold kind of come up and around this way and then same on this side and then over here we're just repeating it that'll give you the corners that kind of look very cohesive um, so that is just another little detail that if you pay attention to that you're going to have a little bit more of a just a really pretty canvas yeah because <laughs> if you if you end up uh doing yeah, the ready. fold yes if you end up doing the fold the other direction you're going to have a problem uh, with just like the, it bunching mm -hmm. and then it's just gonna look like that one corner just looks a little off compared to the others and it looks sloppy it does um, and this is just a, a nice way of keeping it really nice and professional looking yeah um, do we have any other questions officially 
I hope you guys do have questions though, uh, and because this is it's a really awesome like knowledge base to have yeah. in your arsenal. You don't have to stretch your own canvas, um, but especially when you get into those really big canvas sizes, yeah, chipping on those things can get a little pricey. Also, um, just sometimes you have a painting in mind and you have a very specific size that you want that piece to be. Yep. It's not a standard size, so this gives you that option. Also, it gives you the option of all of all of the canvases and linens um, available in rolls. Mm -hmm. Yes. One last thing. Um, I know you all said when you're stretching it, you don't cut the canvas, but they wanted to know if you cut trim any of the excess afterwards. Personal preference. Yeah. We don't. No, we don't. Um, like all of all of this extra. Again, once you cut it, it's gone. Yeah. If you uh, like, if you ever watch those um, restoration videos of like really old paintings. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like 1800s, uh, 1500s, or whatever, the, like the Renaissance period yeah. paintings. Um, Any time they take them off of this, is it what? 14 to 1500s. There you go. This is why I bring Heather, because <laughs> she has all the knowledge. <laughs> History is also not my strong suit, just FYI. I, my poor teachers, they tried. Um, <laughs> but anytime they take them off the stretcher bars, they're always adding on extra because there's just... Yeah, it's just either damaged or uh, it's really just not, there's not enough to really go around another stretcher bar. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, I think you and I both have the same mindset that need it. Like, this is going to be up against a wall. You can't see it. I think it's just my, my yeah. empathy having been someone that's had to restretch a piece that did not have a lot of fabric left over. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to... You want to have that option available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then option. one last one. Uh, when you are gessoing or priming, how do you know when you've put enough primer on it? Like how many how when, many coats of gesso would you need? When it is the surface that you want to paint on. It's true. Uh, and we're talking about layers, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's entirely uh, definitely personal preference. I will also recommend. No matter what the primer that you're using, always read the instructions on the, mm -hmm. the bottle, uh, including the PVA sizing, because um, this will actually tell you to scrub it in, which is exactly what you need to do. So if you forget those things, always reference the label on your bottle yes. or on your can of primer, because they will tell you how to put it on. Um, and if you get to those, uh, those instructions and you know how, exactly how to put it on after you then sand it and then apply more, if you want more of a really nice, smooth portrait surface, you're going to need more layers, but you're going to need to sand really nicely in between. Yeah. If you're an impasto painter, that surface can be a little bit rougher. Mm -hmm. um, I've even had people on their final coat of gesso add in like mix-ins and get a little bit more gritty kind of texture to it, which is really fun. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> no. Break, keep the questions coming. We love so, them. Ruby said since we have you time. don't trim the excess linen, where would you then put your hardware if you're hanging it without a frame? I put mine... I, it, it depends on the hardware because there is different types of hardware out there. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to use D-hooks on mine. Mm -hmm. um, and either I can go through the linen, but I tend to put them... Yeah, you just kind of... Inside... Well, you can put it inside the bar, but you can also just um, move the canvas out of the way. Yeah, and and still put it on the side. Mm -hmm. Cause we're not we're not stapling on the like. Yeah. Cause here's the whole we're canvas. Not wrapping it all the way around. Yeah, uh, it's stapled closer to the actual outside edge. So there's a good portion of uh, bar that isn't actually stapled in, and you can still have access to. And once you get those D hooks in there, um, mm -hmm. and I mean I've even technically gone through the canvas if I just didn't want to mess with it. Um, and then your wire goes across and it... You're good to go? Very easily. All of this canvas tends to get pushed in anyway once it's up against the wall. Mm -hmm. And if you're framing it in um, a picture frame, no worries. you are good to go. Yeah. <laughs> there is none of those issues <laughs> at all. <laughs> now, do we have any other questions? Which, if you do have any other questions and we don't get them or get to them while we're live on the show, 
please put them in the chat. We always go back and double check. You know, it's we are happy to answer any and all of your questions because I know some of this can be very confusing and yeah. we are we are here for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that was canvas stretching, guys. I yeah. hope you enjoyed it. It was it was a lot of fun, and um, I'm probably going to finish PVA sizing this and just keep this for me, and then you get that one. Yep. Yeah. But like um, <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely make sure to uh, hit that like button. And again, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. But also make sure to join me next week because Heather's not going to be here. This was our final show. <laughs> if you want her to come back and do shows with me, just make sure you also put that in the chat because we can force her. <laughs> uh, but next week, I'm going to be doing... Uh, mixed media, which I'm very, Fun. very excited. And it's going to be with a new product that someone specifically designed and I'm so excited about. I've been doing way too many art pieces on this. Uh, it's a synthetic paper, the Artfinity Synthesis Paper. Mm -hmm. I am stoked. This stuff is awesome. So I'm going to be doing mixed media pieces next week. You guys make sure you join me. And uh, are you ready? I am. One last time. All right. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha! We'll see you guys later! Bye!